Let's talk about shaping and installing a nut. A nut is a component that goes up on the headstock end of a neck. Uh, it is a way to bring the wires from the tuners up over the top of that neck and then down across and above the frets and down ultimately down to the bridge. So it's an important component. It's also important because it determines the spacing of the strings up on this end and it also determines the height of the strings above the frets and that's pretty critical. I always uh, tell people and uh, advise people who are building this, focus on getting your action height correct. Uh, a lot of guys, myself included, the first time you build one, uh, your action height is pretty high and you need to work on getting that down and getting it reasonable because what you're doing is as you're fretting your notes, you're bending the wires and the more you bend them, the more you change the angles and you actually make the notes or the tones a little bit different. They'll be off. So we want to try and get that action as close as we can and fairly parallel to the tops of the frets. So an important component is the nut. And I'll show you what I do. Again, like everything else, there's lots of ways of doing this, lots of different ideas. Lots of uh, guys have their own way of doing it and it works out well. This is the way I've done it for uh, uh, most of my builds. Uh, learn this process and it works out pretty well. So what we have is a bone nut and it is actually bone and we're going to install it up here. And what I've done is I've made sure that the connection between the fretboard and my neck is really clean up here at this joint. A lot of times when you uh, glue these fretboards down you'll get squeeze out of glue here and you'll get kind of a sloppy joint and when you try and put the nut on there it might rock a little bit it won't sit flat so I like to come in I take my chisel and clean it up I also grab one of my little files and I make sure to dress the edge and make sure that it's nice and square and clean and then I know that the nut is going to sit on there flat the first step I do is I use what's called a flat pencil uh, you may have these, may know about it. It's basically just taking a pencil, putting it on the belt sander, and sanding half of it away so that we know that there's a flat surface here and then there's a point right up on the end. So when we put the bridge on, when we put the nut on here and we take a look at it, we can lay the flat pencil on top of the frets and we can go across and mark it. And what that will do is that will give us a line that shows where the top of the frets are relative to this nut. So we got a line there. The next thing I like to do is come in and kind of mark an imaginary line where the, the fret, where the strings are actually going to be. And what I do is I use the uh, fret rocker. It's a little bit thick. It means the strings would be a little bit high, but it's a good starting point. And so I come in and I use that and I scribe another line across here. And then you can see clearly we have the one line here, we have another line up here, and that's where the strings would be. And then the difference is the area that we've got to make a notch. We've got to make a notch in here to get the strings to come down and get closer to the, uh, the frets. By looking at this, that distance is pretty, pretty significant, and that would require a lot of uh, sanding and a lot of filing to get those slots down. And I don't like big slots. They look a little bit sloppy. So what I've already done is I've kind of prepared a nut that I came in and I shortened the back end of it. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back on here, the shorter one. And I'm going to take again my half pencil. I'm going to scribe a line across there to show where the line is for the tops of the frets. And you can see it, a nice clean line there. Again, put it back down. Take my fret rocker. Again, take the, the flat pencil and I'm going to scribe a line across there. And I can kind of take a look, it wasn't perfectly clear, but I can kind of see that what I have is a line that's getting closer to the top of the nut, meaning that I'll have a lot less uh, filing and sanding to get down to get the string side. I know I'm going to have to go beyond this line, uh, but it's a good start. So I'm happy with this. So the next thing what I do is once I get that, 
So I'm going to go ahead and install it. And all I use, works out really well, is I just put a little bit of super glue on the bottom and a little bit on the face here. Just set it in place. You can remove the pencil lines if you want to. I'll make it nice and clean. But I'll go ahead and hold it for a few seconds and let it uh, set. It doesn't take a lot to secure a nut because if you can imagine, you've got the strings coming over the top. They go down the sides. They're hooked up to the, uh, to the tuners. They're tightened up. So there's a lot of pressure pushing down on this and it would hold it in place. So I'm pretty pleased looking at this that I've got a nut that's the right height. Uh, looked pretty good, pretty solid, ready to go. Uh, so the next step is to uh, think about actually marking this because what we have to do is we have to put our grooves in there or our slots in there for the strings. I've done a lot of different ways. I've taken rulers and pencils and actually tried to mark it and stuff. But I had one uh, luthier friend of mine really gave me a pretty good tip one time when he saw what I was doing. What he did was he gave me a nut off of a six string guitar. And he said, Mike, what you need to do is just take the four center marks for a four string. And that makes sense. I had always thought that the lines needed to be parallel running down here and the spacing had to be consistent from here all the way down to the bridge. But a lot of guys have told me that no, it's okay if the strings continue uh, to go together as they go up the neck. So what I've done is I've again set this little nut here that was for a four string or for a six string. I've kind of centered it up and now what I do is just transfer the marks. And now I have this marked for a four string. And you can see the marks that I've put on there. And the spacing is good. It's gonna look good, it's gonna work out well. Now the tricky thing is to begin to uh, file those. Now one of the things, again, if you can think about it, is the string's gonna come down and it needs to have a break angle. And it needs to make contact at the very front of the nut not the middle of the nut or not the back of the nut. It needs to make contact here at the front. What we're trying to do is get a scale length between here, this face, and the bridge that's as close as we can to the ideal scale length. In this case, it'll be 25 and a half. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that the string is going to ride on the top. Now what I do, um, I'm kind of out of sequence here, but what I do is I go ahead and I begin to file these to get started. Then I finish and I come in in the setup and I actually fine tune it. And I take the slots down a little bit further. I take a look at where my string height is, file it a little bit more, take a look, get it set up right. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can do it. We also sell a string action ruler. It's kind of nice. You can actually lay it in there and get an idea of about where you are. It's good for comparison purposes. Uh, a big trick I like to do, and again taught by some good people, is just basically take it and fret it on the second fret down and make sure that it's not touching here, that it's just above it, and that's about the right height. So again, now that I've got this marked, again I use the uh, existing six string nut, I've got it marked, uh, and this is something that requires a little bit of precision. I like to take, uh, in my little inexpensive a file kit that we have. I like to take the one that's triangular and I look at the top of it and I very carefully align the file, the pointy part of the file up and I begin to file. Come back and check it and I can see that I've actually hit the, the mark pretty well and then uh, just keep going. And as you can see what I've done is I've now angled the file down because I want to kind of protect that front end edge and keep it high, keep it above the rest of the uh, slot. And so I'm filing down and I've got a slot made. Uh, I can tell by looking at this that I've got a long way to go uh, to get to the right height, but this is a start. And I'll go ahead and then I'll do uh, the rest of them. I'll get them all filed. Spacing should be good. We sell also, we sell uh, files for cutting the, the, the uh, nut slots. Uh, they're size one through six, and you can kind of read on the handle uh, which ones they are. This one happens to be a uh, number three and six, and if you look at one side, you can tell uh, that's really pretty uh, wide. Uh, so that wouldn't be here because this is not a six string. 
uh, we would actually want to use number four, so one and four. Uh, when I get closer and I was finishing, what I would actually do is use this. And whereas a triangular file gives you kind of a, a, a groove, uh, this kind of has more of a flat bottom to it to match up more closely with the string, and that's the right way to do. Handy little tool, uh, not really expensive when you compare it to some of the other ones that are out there. So again, we've glued the knot, nut in place. We've got it relatively close to the height that we need. We've come in and we've begun to slot this. We'll go ahead and finish slotting this. Go ahead and finish the guitar. We know it's going to be a little bit high, but then we can lift the strings, move them off, and begin to file each one individually. And that's kind of a final setup thing that as we get closer, we start to get really, really close on the depths of our uh, nut slots, and that'll make it play really well. And again, we want to make sure that we try and keep that action as low as possible. So again, I hope these uh, tips were helpful. I uh, hope that uh, you learned something from this and hope it'll help you uh, build a, a better cigar box guitar. Thank you.